All right, and I guess it all comes back to politics and who do you blame and who do you vote for and who do you support and been a lot of politics this year, a lot of change in politics. Uh, we've spoken often this year to uh, Bryce Edwards from the Democracy Project, uh, political lecturer at Victoria University. Um, and, of course, we've just had the by-election, which I think probably, probably is the last great political occurrence of... 2022, I say that with fingers crossed as the press gallery and politicians prepare for the famous press gallery party next Wednesday night, which I will be attending uh, for the first time in some years. Um, what has the year been like and how do we end up at the end of 20... What is it? 2022. Oh, yeah, 2022. Thank you. We're joined now by Bryce Edwards. Bryce, g'day, mate. How are you? Not so bad, Sean. All right. No real surprises there in Tauranga, was there? Oh, we're talking about Hamilton West? Ah, oh, sorry, Hamilton West. Jeez. Yep. <laughs> Not oh, really. Yeah. No, I, I, everyone could see the way the wind was blowing. But, you know, it was just amazing that Labor managed to lose 16,000 votes. Yeah. Um, you know, this is how many people they lost since um, two years ago. And so this is being... I, I'm, I've been reading across the commentary this, this morning and... Yeah, everyone says this is a huge blow to Labour, even though they saw it coming. Uh, Claire Trivet, I think, sums it up as a walloping for Labour. Yeah. You know, this is this is an incumbent government, um, yeah, losing 16,000 votes in this electorate. So, yeah, pretty yeah. huge. And do you think, if you like, a telling poll on the political mood of the entire country in some ways? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, Labor just can't seem to get anything right at the moment. So, yeah, losing this does reflect the fact that, um, you know, all the narratives are going against them. You know, all everything about crime, law and order, cost of living, um, everything around bungled three water stuff did feed into this poll in Hamilton West. Um, and, yeah, I think we're likely to see that it wasn't just about local conditions. Yeah. It really was reflecting the mood. Yeah. Um, and we look at all the political polls, they're all going one way, the trend is all one way. And actually that latest Roy Morgan on leadership, I always work on the some assumption that you give the incumbent Prime Minister a nine percentage point lead for just being the Prime Minister in a preferred Prime Minister poll. And if you use that criteria in the latest polls, well, Luxon is actually doing incredibly well, even in comparison with past opposition leaders at this part of the electoral cycle. Oh, absolutely. Look, I don't really like doing these end-of-year things where we decide who the politician of the year no, is. I, have so I forth. asked you that? But, <laughs> no, but I'm just saying that Luxon probably is the politician of the year. Look, I don't think he's been great, but, you know, somehow... He, you know, he's done something astounding of turning everything around, becoming almost, yeah, the preferred prime minister, um, turned national's fortunes around. Um, you know, got through to and through confusing to Bookie and where was it, Honolulu? Yeah, I mean, all those things are just mostly beltway sort of things that no one really cares about. You yeah. know, but but that's right. He's, he he, make, he does make some gaffes from time to time, um, but none of it really is stuck and. Yeah, here we are at the end of the year and he looks like he could be the, the Prime Minister. Yeah. See, on substantive performance, time. I wouldn't go. I don't know that I would go for Lux and he's too vanilla for me. And I yeah, think he plays too safe that. a game. I look at Nicola yep. Willis, who I think has been outstanding in the times we've had her on a programme, incredibly um, clear communicator. So I think she's done great. But I think David Seymour's had yeah. an active had an incredible year. Yeah, no, no, those, those are good calls. And it's a bit sad that you're not really saying anyone from the left. There's no Greens or Labour yeah. MPs you're highlighting there, which I think is quite um, in line with reality, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, but, I have to know, say, hard I, work, I just, a mess clear up of the year is Chris Hipkins. By a country mile, he's, he's the guy yeah, in Labour yeah. I, I think who writes I the shit. Right you know? Yeah. I mean, he's once again, he, he's carrying too much on his shoulders. Um, you know, he's got, what, education... Um, I forget what he's got now. Um, state yeah. services, um, health. I don't know. Health? health, yeah, yeah. And any um, other, uh, and any other SHIT that pops up, basically. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. 
So no, he, he, he's he's the beast of uh, yeah. a poor a poor performing lot, I yeah. think. On the now, Bryce, I saw Winston Peters last Wednesday. I bumped into him in all places at the yep. Green Parrot, the Green Parrot <laughs> Cafe in Wellington, and had a chat to him and his people who were with him. And some disappointment well, that in that last Roy Morgan they didn't crack five percent. And I get the impression that they believe. Once they have a mainstream political poll that puts them at 5%, the whole perception of them changes and they're really back in the game. Oh, I'm sure that's right. But even at 4% that they're getting in some of these polls is pretty much enough, I think, a year before the election to show that they are back. Um, and you'd be a bit crazy not to assume that they're, you know, going to be a big part of next year's election. Yeah, but are they? Um, because he can't play and he's basically said, I'm not going with Labour. Yeah, look, as you so pointed what out... So what is he about the ultimate... There's, there's, a bit of, yeah. there's a bit of wiggle room there and I, I, I don't really take him at face value on that. You know, um, he'll say something different next week and he'll certainly be saying something different in the run-up to the polls. Um, I, I don't know. It's, it, it seems a bit odd that he's given away that leverage. Yeah, yeah, it does to me. But then what has he become but as the alternate support party for National with that? It's who do we, you want to be in coalition or the major coalition party with National? Do you want New Zealand first or do you want ACT? And that seems to be where he's painting himself. I just don't know if yeah, that's so 5%. I, and maybe that is smart. Maybe that is smart. If the winds are blowing so much to make a national government likely, then he wants to align with that to be the moderating force you know, the handbrake that he says he done, did so well during the last Labour government. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe that is smart. And, you know, there's a lot of people that aren't convinced by national, you know, quite rightly, I yeah. think. Yeah. So, you know, um, they're sick of the current government and there's always sort of centrist voters who think, well, yeah. this government's stuffed up. But, you know, national's not really putting forward any alternatives yeah. that are convincing us. Yeah. And, you know, and they're probably a bit scared of, um, of ACT being the the tail that wags the dog, and so that does actually nicely position New Zealand First to come through as, you know, the person, mm. the party, to, to to keep the national honest. So, yeah, so the text has said honest. Winston will be the anti-woke party of the right. Yeah I, yeah, I think that's right. I mean, of course, Act's already doing that to some large extent, and that's why they're doing so well. Yeah. As long, when Act start turning back to maybe some of the more, uh, you know, radical economic reforms that they want to do, yeah. they might burn off some of that support yeah. and uh, and in favour of New Zealand first. Yeah, uh, Bryce. Someone else has pointed out Chris Hipkins, of course, the police minister. So dealing with the wonderful oh, ram raid, right. ram raid, as you that's once again are what done, he's for done you. yeah. Um, yep. Look, look at all this. The other thing that if it was a political trend of the year was the rise of or the, the plethora of um, small political parties yeah. uh, or movements, you know, Voices for Freedom, Matt King up in uh, Northland. Um, this group is aligned with uh, Destiny Church uh, and Brian Tummock, I can't remember all their names. They've all got national yeah. or new or Christian or something in them. Uh, new conservatives still going. None yeah. of them without... Okay. Uh, and, not, and, and now we've got... Well, well, we've got Gaurav Sharma saying, I want to found a, full, a small party, which I always think is a dumb thing for a politician to do because you want to have a big party. So oh, I think there's room for a small party. Make room for a big party. And we've got... Um, uh, glory be, praise the Lord and pass the ammunition. Liz Gunn says she's going into politics, though I note that Brian Tamaki says she's not standing for us. Um, so yeah. all these small sort of splintery, and if I was going to look for a, a common denominator, they're all a little bit anti-vax and a little bit Christian, it would seem to me, have, have emerged. Oh, I, I can't really see how that all those fringe elements adds up to enough. And, you know, I think I've said this to you before, Brian Tamaki in particular, um, I don't think he wants to be in, in Parliament. Mm. He just, you know, needs to keep on peer leading to his, his church congregation. And it's about getting them, you know, paying their, yes. 
their tithes and you know being excited about something and it's the same with most of these fringe groups i don't think they really have much of a chance of doing having much impact in the coming year but it's those other minor parties yeah act new zealand first the greens the murray party that could have a big impact on the election more so than in previous years um because you know um if national doesn't and I still don't really think National's going to get back up into the high 40s and be able to, Ooh, you know, be a... why not? I, well, precisely because of what you just bef- said before, they're too vanilla. They don't really have enough to excite um, anyone, really. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and they're not aiming... Well, I, they're not I aiming to excite anyone, that's the No, I don't think so. They, they just... <laughs> No, I mean, it sounds absurd, but they're mm. not. Mm. They're just wanting the current government to fall over and mm. them to be the, the beneficiaries of that. And they want to not put a foot wrong, not mm. to alienate anyone. So in the end, National, I think, will get about 40% of the vote, um, but they'll be reliant on, yeah, ACT, mm. maybe New Zealand First, I, maybe even the Murray Party. Yeah. Uh, OK, let's talk about the Greens then. And apart from a stunning electoral victory in the Wellington um, Merrill, Merrill race and fundamentally Tory Whanau as, yeah. a, Green, as a Green Mayor, yep. um, and they could say they got some policy gains this year, um, but where are the Green Party? Because it seems to me they're at, they're kind of stuck where they are. They are not flavour of the month at the moment. And, of course, they're always going to be there now. There's no question they fall below, that they'll fall below 5%. What does next year hold for the Greens and how do they improve their fortunes? Well, funnily enough, they are a bit like National at the moment. They're not really very dynamic. They're not really putting forward anything fresh, new, exciting for their you know, potential supporters. But they're just the beneficiaries of Labour going down in the polls and beneficiaries of, you know, people on the left that feel this government hasn't done enough for, you know, kind of traditional progressive uh, concerns. So they're kind of vacuuming up that support without really doing any much for it. So... I don't know, and I talk to quite a few lefties and progressives who... And then they, they rolled their leader with no one with, to replace, and that was one of the weirdest things I've ever seen in politics. Yeah, but it just does speak to, you know, how much concern there is actually within the Greens that James Shaw and Marama Davidson aren't really um, achieving much. And they, you know, that even though they didn't have anyone to replace him with, um, they were desperate to, to get rid of him. Yeah. And um, and same with Marama Davidson. There's not a huge amount of support within her amongst the rank and file in the Green yeah. Movement. Um, so they're not a terribly functional party either, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, I would agree. You know? Te yeah. Pate Māori, who I've tried to get on the show and none of their MPs have fronted, which is just silly. Yeah. But, um, well, I, you know what, I just kind of like, I love underdogs. Yeah. Uh, and they've been underdogs, but, man, they've branded. They've branded. It's not like you don't they, know who they, they are. Exactly. Um, you might not know exactly what they stand for on lots of things, but, um, yeah, their branding's pretty strong. It's, it, it is a bit like the Green Party brand, you know. It's it's kind of attracting people that, um, yeah, just think, oh, well, the others are crap. And, you know, I like a bit more flavour, you know, with a bit more mariness, a bit more environmentalness with the Greens, yeah. but I don't really have to look at their manifestos and read their speeches. I kind of, you know, want to you know, kick against the pricks and and vote for something that's yeah. a bit different. And so both those parties are doing well for that reason. Do they? Do they represent a threat to Labour and that they could grow and support, deny Labour Māori seats it's traditionally regarded oh, as its ab- own? Absolutely, they could, yes. And... Um, you know, those seats are volatile. People used to regard them um, as being, you know, labours for life. But, you know, Maori voters in those electorates are pretty savvy and they will, um, if they feel that, you know, labour's not performing, they will look around for other more dynamic um, leaders. And that's what they, they did um, at the last election and they'll do it in larger numbers. And, of course, they've also, people don't talk about this, but, you know, we've got Maori members of the Labour caucus were quite dissatisfied with, um, you know, with how well that party, you know, their own party's doing. 
and would be willing to switch over to the Murray Party. Yeah, at, and that that, that, uh, that was actually where, where I was going to go next and say the other okay. great political story of the year has been the largely unseen tension within, within the Labour Party and the ascendancy and the power struggle inside Labour between its Maori caucus and the wider uh, Labour Party. And it seems to me that that tension is only growing. It is why the Prime Minister cannot back down on three waters, which is electoral poison now, quite clearly. Yeah. The three waters policy and the co-governance that it involves. Nanaya Mahuta's, uh, and we can only know what we're told, but her defiance of the Prime Minister and getting into cahoots with the Greens on the entrenchment provisions, which were then rolled back, is amazing. Yeah. And she has, and I would like to think the platform has played some part in sparking questions about Nanaya Mahuta's appropriateness as a Minister of Cabinet, but she is still there, despite all the question marks over her conduct and behaviour and family and everything else. Is it possible that the big story of might ne next year might be a schism within Labour prior to, to November, earlier in the year, where some Māori MPs do walk and suddenly we have a snap election? Look, I haven't thought about that snap election scenario, but uh, what is quite amazing is how united this Labour government has been. We haven't seen a lot of faction fighting. We haven't seen, you know, different schisms and so forth. And, you know, that's quite remarkable. It does speak to Ardern's ability to keep uh, her party yeah, but united. But under the surface, Bryce, uh, you know there's but, tension there. Well, there is. But it's not tension of the left of the caucus versus the right of the caucus. It really is the, the Murray caucus that is, um, yeah, leveraging its, its power. And, yeah, your summary is, is pretty much correct. Um, but will it lead to any big uh, schism in the next year? It's, it's hard to tell. We see Willie Jackson starting to back down on co-governance. Uh, and we, I think it won't be surprising if the, the merger between, you know, that he's been pushing of uh, TVNZ, RNZ, if that is also... Um, Delayed or put, put off. Yeah, yeah, and just, very yeah. funny. I was yeah. talking to someone in television... Um, yesterday and uh, this person said um well you know you asked me six weeks ago i said 80 to 20 percent chance you know that the merger will go ahead and they said yep. as of now 50 50. so that <laughs> yeah, could be the right. big policy wind back in next year yeah so there are a few issues that i think Wadi jackson nanaya mahuta are having to concede on um uh, but that's the three waters one, like, you quite rightly say. There's been a line in the sand. The Murray Caucus have said this is the one thing we're fighting for. You know, this government might not have delivered on, you know, yeah. the standard of living for Murray, employment for Murray, health, education outcomes for Murray. But we're going to, you know, we're going to draw a line in the sand on three waters. We want to retain that yeah. at all costs. And yes, I think there is the chance of Labour um, MPs saying that they're willing to jump. Um, ship and go across the Murray Party if they uh, feel that they're betrayed by Arjun. Wow. So that's a serious issue. Yeah. yeah. All right, Bryce, the Prime Minister herself, um, who has been the focus of this government, we increasingly live in a kind of presidential political uh, environment. Uh, and more and more people at the dinner parties I go to, not to a lot of them, uh, Bryce, to be honest. Um, but the question is will she stay on? as Prime Minister? Well, it's uh, it's an offensive question to lots of people. Um, and so there was a bit of speculation. I wrote a column about this, mm. you know, about a month ago, and it really upset a lot of people saying, no, this is disloyal oh, to Bryce, Prime Minister. You were out, you were out long before is, that. You're not getting to any yeah, Labour know, Party cocktail parties. But, but you know, yeah. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Yes, I think that you've got to accept that um, Ardern is at a low point now, that um, she's missed her chance to get out while she was on top, and that's really what John Key did so well. He was on the decline when he left Parliament, but he wasn't at a Nadir. He hadn't, you know, had a low point. Yeah. In fact, so he, he got out. out really. I think he calculated he, he wanted to get out while the going was good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, exactly, and so Ardern's missed her chance on that. Yeah. So she, if she left now, and I, I'm not speculating which she's about to but if she left now it would be you know 
be going down at the time that her reputation would be uh, eroded by her. She would be the rat leaving the sinking ship, wouldn't she? Exactly, Mm. and it would look like, um, yeah, she couldn't face the heat Mm. and look like it would be leaving in defeat. So really she has to sit around now and at least get those poll numbers back up a bit higher. Um, and can you think that, yeah, do I mean, you think so that I, can I, be I done, Bryce? Them. Bryce, do you really think that can be done? It, it, it would strike me, in my experience, that once the tide's moving in this direction, yeah. it's pretty hard to stop, mate. I, I think you're right. Um, once, yeah, things are going in a certain direction. But, you know, National could still stuff up. Um, they, you know, Luxon could still have lots of gaffes that might actually bring people's uh, attention a bit more onto whether he's experienced enough, whether he's, you know, got the convictions that he, you know, sort of says he has, um, whether there's enough good talent in the National Party caucus to, especially if we do go into quite a severe recession this year, um, you know, Labour's best line is that they have seen us through COVID and yeah. they will see us through, you know, frightening times. And that could still be powerful when people start to lose their jobs, they start to lose their mortgages or their houses. Yeah. You know, go back to the devil that you know, you know, rather than yeah. the devil you don't. I would say, so, to me, the, the yeah. year in politics or the way it ended up is summed up. I'm just looking at the RNZ webpage that covers the by-election. And there's a picture of a young uh, Māori man with his wife with a moku and three lovely kids smiling at what looks like a pretty swanky sort of party or pretty nice. And that's Tama Potaka. He looks connected and touch, a guy you'd want to have a barbecue. And the other picture is of Georgie Danzi, who's got a white person with a tattoo on her arm, yeah. like the ethnic yeah. tattoo. There are two old guys sitting down in a rather boring-looking room with a few white balloons, and they look right pissed off. And there are a couple of middle-aged women standing behind Georgie Danzi and nothing looks very exciting. And that, to me, those two photographs sum up where we end up the year with the year in politics. Yeah, pretty much, hey. Um, I mean, and maybe it does show that uh, Luxon is giving his party a bit of a kick up the bum and getting those, re- those selection, uh, those, you know, candidate selection processes working properly and maybe he is, you know, fixing some of, the big problems in National where they looked like a, a stale old party that didn't represent, you know, New Zealand in 2022, he seems to be getting that right suddenly. And so, yeah, that those pictures probably do some things up quite nicely. They speak a thousand words. Thank you for all your words this year, Bryce. Uh, we may talk before the end of the no year, trouble. but if not, uh, happy holidays. Good to have you with yep, us. Yep, you too, Sean. That is Bryce Edwards, politically, uh, lecturer at Victoria University, runs the uh, Democracy Project, fine political commentator.